And for my senior project, um, I decided to build a BLDC, otherwise known as a brushless DC motor. You know, I really wanted to get uh, more of an in-depth understanding of how a motor functions, how it operates. I also wanted to really build something that really involved just about everything that I learned here in my time at Palm, in my two years here at Palm Beach State. And I really felt like I did that. It was a lot of fun, you know, it was tedious, but it was a good, I learned a lot throughout the whole process. So, as you know, with any good design, it starts out with the planning phase. I did, a, I did some research online. Basically, what I came up with was, what all to show was this box-like structure, um, entirely made out of PVC. Why PVC? It was cheap, it was easily modified, more importantly, it did not interfere with my uh, magnetic fields. And here, I'm sure um, this plane, almost when my project was near its completion stage here on the image to your right. Um, as you can see, it's a single phase in run type motor. Um, I did 600 turns and each state of holes, which took me quite some time. Um, each hole had to be in opposite direction. And this was really important because it ensured that whenever there was current, the electromagnets would have alternated polar. And that was really important. That was demonstrated later. So as you know, unlike a brush, brush DC motor, brushless, brushless motors have no commutators, not brushes. And so that's what that was one of my first major design um, problem. How then do I provide commutation without the use of a brush or a, or a commutator? Well, from previous classes, um, it had to be done electronically. So I did a lot of research and Basically, in the end, I came up with a simple uh, design solution which involved an H rich circuit, a holotech sensor, and an Arduino microcontroller. Now, why an H rich circuit? Well, this enabled my microcontroller. Um, the H rich circuit also contained the high current switches, um, the MOSFETs, the transistors, are absolutely critical for motor control. Um, and these switches were also con um, controlled by signals from my Arduino. Um, these signals were critical, very important because in my case, my motor speed was determined by setting the duty cycle of those control signals. It's a po very popular technique, I'm sure many of you are familiar with, pulse width modulation. But basically, a PWM signal is a high frequency square wave. And when you, you can vary that duty cycle of that square wave, and by varying it, you can basically um, control the amount of um, power to your load. That's basically why those signals are important. And I also interface that with a potentiometer to give me that ability to vary the um, the UV cycle. Another important component was the Hall effect sensor. Um, because even though my controller was primarily responsible for directing the rotor's position, it needed some sort of feedback system, um, to basically tell where the rotor position or the orientation was in, um, in relation to the scale of poles. And so the Hall effect sensor works basically as a transducer. It converts an analog signal, in this case a magnetic pole, into a digital signal. Transmit that to your controller, and then based off that, the controller switches on and off the appropriate poles needed in order to produce that rotating magnetic field. Of course, I had more problems um, as I went along the way. You know what? Now that I understand theoretically about all of this should work, my problem is now how do I get my polyphic sensor to communicate with my Arduino microcontroller and then to my H bridge motor control circuit? These um, devices do not speak the way of how we speak, um, they use computer language. So I basically had to implement an algorithm to enable all of this to work. And here I have a simplified sketch of how I was able to do this. So basically, your hall effect sensor has two states, has a low and a high, and a high state. And so, what I did was implemented a code that when the hall effect sensor seizes the north side of the magnet, it sends a high signal to, our, to the Arduino, and it enabled the Arduino to send a digital low output signal across the upper left and lower right switches as indicated by S1 and S4, and a digital high signal S, um, across the lower left and upper right switch is indicated by S2 and S3, sending current only in that direction, enabling those switches. When the all effects sensor seizes 
the south pole of the magnet does the opposite. It sends zero volts or a low signal to the Arduino. Then enables the Arduino from that point to close the switches that were previously open and open the switches that were previously closed. It sends current in the opposite direction. And that's what I needed, basically, create that, control the direction of flow of current to basically create the torque needed to drive the motor. Um, in the end, for my data analysis, I installed a tachometer. So I used another polytech sensor. I interfaced that with another controller and then I2C modulate LCD display to give me a um, visual of what uh, my RPM tool is coming out to be. Um, it was a little challenging uh, writing the algorithm for that. And um, it was accurate to within 50 plus or minus 50 RPMs there on the board, plus or minus 60. Um, so my total torque generated produced between 1224 and 1228 RPMs. At this time, I'd like to thank everyone for really coming out here to support us, all, all the students here. Um, you know, I really appreciate all the things that I learned here during my last two years helping to build this motor. You know, I open up the audience for questions. <laughs> no questions, come on. <laughs> Sir. Yeah, when you talk about the C, um, you know, just go for max C, or did you get like set the solar to? Right, so that, that was another issue that I had to, was setting the parameters for the, basically I had a potential meter to vary that duty cycle, and I had issues there in setting the right parameters, but all I was able to get was max speed, and um, slightly in between, slightly in between as well. Um, one of the things I, I didn't say was that if I had to redesign this, I would probably pour concrete um, throw the whole PVC structure, give it more structural integrity, probably as well as I had the wrong ball bearing um, on the rotor. And so I, almost every time I have to kickstart the motor for it to spin because of the friction that it produced. <laughs>